How you doing, YouTube? Matt Nassa Beer Reviews, back with another beer I can't believe I haven't re reviewed before. I've had this beer like 70,000 times. And that would be Opus uh, from Bomb Place Brewing Company. Um, yeah, I've, I, I looked back in my whole beer history thing. That's called videos. And uh, yeah, no Opus. No Opus. Don't know why. This is one of their original recipes. I had this when they opened. First time I was there, I had it. I've had it subsequently nine billion times. I probably what happened was I brought home a like a uh, they used to do the flip top kind of seven fifties uh, kind of things. I probably brought this home several times. Going, I'm going to review this and just drank it anyway. It is their version of an amber, an English style amber ale. And the best part about it is they just got C and D on this. Um, apparently there's somebody in the brewing universe that has something to do that closely relates to Opus, so they got a C and D and they had to change the name. What did they change the name to? Who am I to say? Let's let's Sam, you can you handle this one here. So people have go. been wondering, what are you gonna rename Opus? Well, we thought long and hard about it and Obus. Yeah. Let's drop a little on the bottom of that P and you're good to go. 5.8% uh, Amber Ale, English style, in a crowler. We're drinking it. So, yeah. Let's see what's what. I went to Bon. I did go to Bon. Oh, I went to Bon. Um, yeah, it's my favorite place on earth. It's honestly my favorite tap room to drink in. Period. Like, period, end of sentence. Um, you know, Sam and Gina and the, Kev, the whole gang there is just the best of the best when it comes to just people. <laughs> and the beer's really good. It's quaint. It's tiny. It's weird. It's one of the weirdest tap rooms I've been in because it's super tiny, but I've never felt, like, crowded in there. And I think that's a testament to the environment that they cultivate in there and stuff like that. And, you know, with be me being fully vaccinated and having to be outside the, out in that area... I had to stop by and uh, had a couple two tree beers and I had to get this one to go because of the whole C and D thing. So let's let's go at it. Now you're talking about amber ale, sure. A little bit darker than that, at least on this pour. Definitely kind of I mean I guess you get red tones and a little red ale, a little little amber ale kind of thing going on, but leans a little bit closer to like a darker shilling ale. It makes sense they're doing an English version of it, you know, quarter pinky finger of just north of khaki colored head. Actually that's straight on khaki. Let's get a nose. Sweet malt driven. There's a hop in there. There's a nice kind of hop in there, but there's a sweet caramelly, but it's not like super over the top, like like confectionery, or I shouldn't say confectionery. It's not over the top like candy like caramel. It's more like bready caramel. There's a nice soft kind of tea like tannic bittering from the hops. It very much comes off as a nice spiced brown sweetened breadiness, is kind of what I'm getting from this. That works for me. Let's dive in. Cheers. That's so impactful. 5.8, it's not the tiniest beer in the world, but for this kind of beer, and you know, if you look this up online, which I actually did before I made this video, you get red ale, amber ale, those kind of things. I think that just kind of does this beer it's a disservice to a certain extent, but I think it's its own kind of entity. Because it's not an amber ale. I guess if you're going to have to classify it, you could do that. Red ale, no. Um, you know, milds, bitters, all that kind of stuff. It's barring so many elements from uh, so many different little kind of English style beers. All wrapped up in one. That big tannic tea, tea hop is in here. Spades. Spades. It doesn't get that kind of acidic tartness that you would get from like literally putting a tea bag on your tongue but it's getting all the other bits and pieces of it you're getting that big kind of think like english just a re regular british tea like your what is that black tea and orange pico i think it's a combination they use that kind of vibe on there so you're getting that, that kind of tea like fruitiness those kind of things going on without that kind of tannic acidity to it 
you get this kind of nice brown bready with a dollop of kind of sweet and brown sugar caramel again not a sweet beer it's sweet enough to kind of where it kind of holds up as being something kind of sweet but it just has this nice kind of counterbalancing sweetness to that kind of english style bittering on it that just is absolutely needed it's not even close to being like a casky kind of nitro level kind of softness. Sometimes you can get that from some of these kind of like pubish kind of ales, but it does have a softness to it. It does kind of make you a little bit happy with how it kind of comes off in that manner and just comes off as really nice kind of like, like next level, like drinking beer. And by that, I mean, you're drinking like three, maybe dollop di dipping into a little bit of 4% like English cask mild stuff. And then you're just like, I want a big beer. I want something big. I've been chugging these three, three and a half, four percent, you know, pub beers for two hours, having a blast. I just want something to electrify my palate. That's exactly what this beer does. Now that's a foreign concept for a lot of people. Cause they're like, you know, okay, I'll drink this 6% uh, session IPA, then I'll drink this 7% IPA, then I'll drink this 85 9% double IPA, then give me a pastry salad, and then give me a barley wine. That's the typical American progression when it comes to that kind of thing. When you're talking about bellying up to a bar, kind of like I do at Bond when I go and hang out there, go watch the video. I did like a little video. There's not a ton of Bond in there, but I showed you guys what the place looks like. You can see how quaint and beautiful and tiny it is. And, um, and just sit up at that bar and just hang and, and, and drink and have a good time. This is that you know, barley wine. This is what you want when you want that little bigger pop of a beer that is just something a little bit more kind of big and robust and, and, and aggressive, but at a very paltry 5.8%. That's that's a beautiful thing. An absolutely 100% beautiful thing. Mm. Yeah, I dig that. I think it's fun. I think it's tasty. I like it. It's almost like kind of American barley wine light. I mean that in a certain... Or I shouldn't say American barley wine light. Say fresh English barley wine light, and that it's giving me that tannic hop, it's giving me that nice, rich kind of caramel bready thing, but not over the top. And this really nice mouthfeel to it, it's what I would expect. Give this beer, do a quadruple version of this, give me a 12% version of this, a 15% version of this. This is the English barley wine that I covet so much, but this is just the 5% version of that. It does not suck, Obis. O B U S. No, don't peas. Mind your peas. I was gonna say Q's, but Q's are fine. We have no beef with the Q's. Anyway, um, but yeah. Right, you know what else I'm gonna say? I said everything about the beer. Is it one of the better English shilling? I, I would call it a shilling ale. Uh, a bigger shilling ale, a 60, 80 shilling ale, something along those lines. Maybe I'm messing up my shillings. I don't know. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, Mount Rushmore status. Let's put that. Uh, listen. I'm almost like to the point where just I I love Bond so much. I've talked poopy about their beers before, so it's not like I'm incapable of saying, okay, this isn't my favorite kind of beer, but this is just it's what I like to drink. Brewery I love. What do you want? Call me. Text me. I'll take you there. We'll have a blast. Open invitation to anybody out there. Anyway, um baggage availability, I wanna say I have no idea. <laughs> I rarely I mean, they, they treat me very well there. But I think I want to say this is 8 bucks for 8 to 10, 8 to 12 bucks for a collar. Um, and leave you with, if you like what, well, you like this. If you like English-style beers with a subtle kind of volume that America tends to bring in a very fun way from people trying to do good things, I think it's an important moniker to put on there. You'll like this. There you go. Reviewing the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers. If you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. If you've had this, you need to tell me. Let me know what you think. Uh, Beer Messy. If you want to see me doing podcasting stuff, we've talked to Sam from Bomb before. Go check us out. It was like 9 a.m. where he, he rolled out with like a bottle of whiskey. It was it was fun. All the fun. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of Bomb Place right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>